Hey, I'm Laura Lynch and this is Human Nutrition and the Digestive System. I'm going to present my PowerPoint explaining the structures and functions of the digestive system, the processes of mechanical and chemical digestion, including the optimum conditions for the enzymes involved and the constituent food groups that make up a balanced diet. So digestion is the process in which our body turns the food we eat into nutrients. This will be used in our bodies for energy growth and repair, cell repair. It sustains life processes by fueling metabolism, respiration and other vital body processes. The digestive tract is a continuous tube that has two open starting with the mouth and ending with the anus. So let's take a look at the organs and their functions in aiding digestion. Starting with the mouth, including the teeth and the tongue, we use our teeth to chew the food, causing mechanical breakdown. Our tongue mixes the food of our saliva, known as mastication. Saliva is stimulated in our mouths by hunger, smell and sight. It's slightly alkaline, allowing our mouths to stay moist, and our tongue rolls the food into what we call a bolus, a small mass of substance then swallowed and passes down into the esophagus. Now, before it reaches the esophagus, we reach the pharynx. This process becomes involuntary, which means the only way it can continue is down the digestive tract. The pharynx is a muscular wall that contracts and pushes the food over the epiglottis, which then closes over the pharynx, then onto the esophagus. The esophagus is 25 centimetres long, extends from the pharynx through the diaphragm into the stomach. It's located in your throat near your trachea, also known as the windpipe. It receives the food and the epiglottis folds over the windpipe to prevent us from choking. Peristalsis occurs, which is contractions within the muscles in the esophagus, so it can push the food and deliver it into the stomach. Then we reach the liver, situated on the right of the diaphragm, function to produce bile, greenish, yellowy in colour, made up of salt, water and cholesterol, and the pigment bilirubin. Bile leaves through the bile ducts and carried and stored in the gallbladder. The gallbladder is pear-shaped in size, attached to the side of the liver, stores bile, which helps digest fats. The stomach is a hollow organ in the abdomen, stores and holds the food whilst it gets mixed up with the stomach enzymes. The enzymes then continue to break down the foods in the cell lining of the stomach and they secrete a strong acid and powerful enzymes are responsible for the breakdown process. When the food is then released, it is then released into the small intestine. The majority of digestion and absorption is actually carried out in the small intestine, six or seven metres in length and divided into three parts. The duodenum responsible for breakdown, the geogenum and the ileum are lower down in the intestine and are responsible for the absorption of nutrients into the bloodstream. Food is broken down using enzymes released by the pancreas and bile from the liver. Contents of the small intestine start semi-solid and end in a liquid. So once all the nutrients have been absorbed, the leftover residue is passed through the small intestine and moves into the colon, also known as the large intestine. Now, shorter than the small intestine, but a lot thicker, the function of the large intestine is to absorb all vitamins, convert food into faeces and remove water from the faeces. Broken into four sections, the ascending colon removes nutrients and produces water. The transverse colon is the move, movable part of the colon. The descending colon where faeces are stored and the stigmoid is the last part, which is the muscular walls contracting, increasing pressure, causing the stools to go down into the rectum. The rectum is the temporary part where the faeces are stored until they get pushed into the anus, which is the canal that is the terminal and final part of the digestive system where the faeces leave the body and are excreted. Bodies don't have the ability to absorb or use large food molecules. They have to be broken down into smaller and more manageable pieces. And this is carried through a combined process of mechanical and chemical digestion. So mechanical digestion is a method carried out in the mouth through chewing and the churning of the stomach. The food will sit in the stomach. It's turned into a paste called chyme. This will then enter the first section of the small intestine, the duodenum. Absorption occurs and peristalsis again occurs where the muscles contract and relax. And chemical digestion also carried in the mouth, but the food is broken through the release of enzymes in our saliva. So a trigger in the brain causes the production of the saliva that softens the food and makes it easier to swallow. Enzymes in the saliva, known as amylase, break down the starch into sugars and the enzymes speed up the rate of digestion by lowering the activation energy. Bile from the liver is also used as the bile ducts interact with the fat globules and divide them into smaller droplets known as emulsification. See the table here on the screen, you can see the enzyme, the food they digest and what they absorb at the end. So for example, the amylase, they digest starch and the end product is glucose, also known as sugar. Let's take a look at two enzymes in particular. First, we have pepsin. So it's recognised in 1836 by a German physiologist, Theodore Schwann, a powerful enzyme that has the ability to digest proteins in foods such as meat, eggs, seeds and other dairy products. Pepsogen is stored in the glands in the mucous membrane of the stomach and then impulses and hormone secretions of gastrin and secretin stimulate the release of pepsinogen in the digestion in the stomach and is mixed with hydraulic acid which converts the active enzyme into pepsin. To be able to work efficiently, pepsin needs a pH scale 
with the same greater acidity as the gastric juices of about 1.5 to 2.5. Then we have lactase. So lactase is an enzyme located in the small intestine. It digests lactose, which is sugar found in milk. Now, it's very important in regards to infants as lactase will decrease in the body when a young person is weaned off milk and can therefore consume other foods. So lactase breaks down lactose into two simple sugars, glucose and galactose. It's then absorbed in the small intestine. If it's not broken down, what will happen is it will pass through the digestive tract and it will not be absorbed. This is when it can lead to complications such as lactose intolerance. This is when the body is unable to produce lactase. And to be able to digest lactase within our bodies, the enzyme need a pH level of about 6. Moving on to constituent food groups, a balanced diet consists of essential nutrients such as carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals and water. If you see the diagram here, this is the National Food Guide and the government's recommendations for a healthy diet, consisting of 55% carbohydrates, 20% unsaturated fats, 15% protein and 10% unsaturated fats. Now the foods are broken down into five categories. Group one, you have meat, eggs and fish. These are our protein foods. They're a good source of fibre, vitamins and minerals and naturally very low in fats. Meat contain a main source of vitamin B12 also. Then moving on to group two is our starchy foods such as bread, cereals and potatoes. This also includes foods such as pasta and rice. These are a good source of energy, essential for fibre, calcium, iron and vitamins. Due to high amounts of carbohydrates within starchy foods, they keep us full up for longer. Group three is the colourful group of the more is our fruits and vegetables. We should eat these in at least five portions a day. They contain extremely important vitamins and minerals and they help prevent diseases as well as fibre, which lowers cholesterol, keeps our bowel healthy and aids digestion. Group four, you have our milk and dairy, a great source of protein and vitamins and contain large amounts of calcium that keep our bones strong and healthy. Dairy products such as cheese and yogurts can also be higher in sugar, salts and fats. So we should aim to consume these in smaller quantities compared to our fruits and veg. So moving on to our favourite foods, group five, this also includes oil spreads, chocolate cakes and biscuits and also includes sugary drinks. They're all very high in fat, salt and sugar. So it's better to eat these fatty foods less often and in smaller amounts. Eating too much of this food group can lead to health issues, prevent an unhealthy lifestyle and this group has very little nutritional value in regards to a healthy balanced diet. So finally, hydration. We lose fluids every day through breathing, sweating, going to the toilet. So continuously replacing our fluids is very important and you should aim to drink at least six to eight glasses of water a day to keep ourselves hydrated. So that concludes the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you have a better understanding of the structures and functions of the digestive system, the role of the enzymes in regards to mechanical and chemical digestion and the importance of a healthy, balanced lifestyle. If you do have any questions, feel free to ask me. Thank you.